you can definitely expect to see a lot of clutch with the movement change they've added um, with the shield and the stack ability. Uh, he's he's mobile. I mean, he is the size of a house. You can hit him, but I mean, with that shield, he, he's really disruptive up close with rocket launcher. So um, it's interesting. Galena is also a good pick for blood run. Uh, the portal is a real good cutoff point. Um, so having having strategically placed the uh, totems can really make a difference in the match. Nyx is going to be a little light considering um, uh, LF uh, LWF's kind of selection. He went a little heavier if you look at look at the matchups. All right. Well, the draft has now completed, and it's looking like, folks, we're going to be jumping into game here now in just a second. Blood Run is going to be our first map here between these two teams. And to explain our format a little bit better here, too, it is going to be a best of three series. But within the maps themselves, it's going to be best of five on the duels. So players have loaded in, and now it's time for battle. Are you ready, Machiavelli, for our first match? I'm ready to see what these guys got. There's a lot of, like I said, the brackets, a lot of unknown names people trying to make a name for themselves so we'll see what happens yeah absolutely so just in the warm-up now guys so as soon as the players have uh figured everything out here now you can see this uh for people unfamiliar you watch clutch you'll have this acceleration he can do this person double hits the direction i think he's uh having a little bit of fun there right now but a little warm-up fun yeah just a little bit of warm-up between these two but, we are, but you'll note, of course, that we have the sides very well defined. LWF is going to be our blue player here, starting off Round on the two, clutch, I believe. And then three, Plague is going to be over two, on the red side. Of course, they one, can change their picks. They're not locked one, into any straight-up selection or anything like that. They can go along and pick any three of their champions to start off. Just once one dies, you can't re-pick that one until the next round. So getting right into it. And these guys are actually just going to leap right into a fight here. LWF being the first to take battle. Thankfully, he has that shield, so he's able to quickly retreat, get himself out of there. But however, play coming in from the backside, doing loads of damage to LWF. He's completely cornered, and he is going to go down straight forward here to start it off, giving Plague that first frag. Yeah, just a little careless by LWF. I mean, when a Nyx takes off, you got to be careful, especially with you haven't seen the Ghost Walk. You always got to have your head on a swivel. Yeah, Plague already connecting a rail onto the second champion for LWF, too. He's gone over to the Scale Bearer, so still a fairly tanky champion like we saw back on the Clutch, too. Uh, does have that very nice charge, which he can use as a defensive cooldown. It reduces the amount of damage he takes while he's in that charge, and also a very offensive cooldown as well, as you can just ram directly into their enemies, or just movement, just to try and get yourself to a different part of the map quickly, if that's what you're looking to do. Stacks are pretty even right now. Uh, it's somebody's going to be looking to get that initial shot. Uh, the heavy armor and the mega health are both at approximately the same time. Um, so you can kind of, like, if one goes for one, you kind of go for the other sort of thing and you can make sure you always have a little something like you did right there LWF that was a good rocket hit and yeah, Plague still seems to be controlling most of this situation right now though LWF does have a pretty good stack going for himself that you can see over there right below him both of these players trying to listen for the other one as you saw LWF kind of crouching around there Plague was doing the same exact thing but Plague a little bit more patient there so he does get that surprise a little bit of damage against LWF and uh, that'll pretty much send him to the backside as he looks to retreat again. He may have to move in quickly, though, but oh, nicely found, actually. He does catch Plague right up on top of the full armor spawn. So he's going to be able to do some great damage to him. And now in comes the charge. going to try to close out, but he missed. And now he's stuck in a corner oh. and forced to go through the portal. A uh, missed opportunity by LWF there. He really had a chance. If he was a little more aggressive on that, that heavy armor push and being more on top of that timing, he could have pushed Plague there really hard. So now taking a look here. The next... Yeah, Plague's in good good shape right now. Yeah. Plague's going to find himself in a very good position here to try and uh, close out. The problem is LWF has a boatload of health to work off of, but Plague has the pentultimate advantage if this goes to the full timer duration of this. And look at Plague, nicely done, just completely jukes his opponent as he tries to go for another charge again, and it quite unfortunately misses drastically. Oh, and even gets that nice rail, just reading right into LWF at this point. LWF did the smart thing there. Um, he's keeping himself in the game. He backed off. Another rail would have killed him. He backed off, grabbed some green. Uh, I don't know about fighting for heavy, uh, that mega health right there, but uh, he may get it. He may get it. Oh, he's going to get it, yeah. Hey, Ooh, Plague. Very risky. I didn't really want to seem to uh, jump in there for that fight too much, so both of them kind of end up backing out. This heavy, this heavy armor is going to be the next big play here. 
we go. The heavy armor spawning in play. Gonna move in, but oh, right at the last minute. With only 26 HP left there, LWF was able to survive. Knocked out Plague. Nicely done. Took him down. And now we're even back down into a 2v2 situation. LWF kind of on the run, though. He's still low on HP. Thankfully, he's got a crap ton of armor. And now retreating, he's going to be able to restack that back up to a pretty good portion. Yeah, that was uh, a big kill. It's an interesting match right now. That, that really swung things. It, it, we're looking like we could go to sudden death, possibly. That might be the case, as that should be coming up in about another minute or so here. As LWF is still going hunting, trying to find out where Plague is. He's got a pretty good lock on him. He's got to be careful of the totems, though. He shot it, but I think he missed the totem and took the damage from it anyway. He's doing massive rocket damage, though. And in fact, he's just going to uh, rush right through to take down Plague's second champion now. I don't think Plague was expecting that much aggression at all. It, well, yeah, he made a Oh, my gosh. He, he made a mistake. He got... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, I don't know what happened there. <laughs> Complete turnaround by Plague right there, as he also... I was yeah, I was just about to comment about how he made an, er an error getting really aggressive and then his aggression just literally paid off and bailed him out right there. Plague's going to be a little bit careful here. Doesn't have a whole lot of armor to work off of and only 75 of his HP still. But thankfully he has the Dire Orb up, so he's got a quick teleport outside of the fight. Assuming he's found in a good spot, that is. And speaking of that Dire Orb, now we're going to see it used right now to try and go pick up the full armor kit. He gets it and is forced once again to fall back. Neither player really getting a huge advantage going right now, but LWF, we've seen this so far throughout the entire round. He's actually been really good at keeping his stack high, whether it's uh, whether it's just focused on health. He hasn't had armor for a whole lot, but he's almost always been getting that mega health pickup, like at almost every single spawn, as far as I've been able to see anyway. And even right now, it's spawned out, and he's kind of camping it, hoping that uh, Plague would go for it. But he doesn't take the bait. However, he's able to lock him into that bounce right there, taking him out and finishing off the round for himself. That was a well-placed second shot. When he bounced him with the first one, it's like, don't panic. You know, you have your time. Just take your time and hit that second shot off the wall. And he, he lined it up good. Plague made some very big tactical errors uh, in that in that round, in my opinion. I mean, they both made some tactical errors, but Plague made some really big ones, and that's why he lost. Started off with the advantage, too, as well. He got that first kill, uh, taking down taking down the clutch nice and early on. LWF, though, with some nice jumps, getting himself into his opponent's graces, reading into exactly where he's going, too. Plague trying to run away on that ghost walk, but LWF does indeed give up the fight. He's now trying to go back in to hunt down his opponent here. Nice rockets again connecting, forcing Plague to retreat once more. LWF starting to get a little bit low here as well. He's lost all of his armor, got hit by that real kick, get hit by another one, but he does anyway, and that's going to give Plague the first kill again. Yeah, pushing too aggressive. I know uh, Nyx is... Oh! Ooh. I mean, see, that's why he was pushing, because Nyx was so low, but he put himself in such a rail, rail happy position, I guess. And now LWF wants quick revenge, but he missed the charge again, I believe. So forced into a corner. He still has the health to fight for this one. Just walking around there, right into the rockets. So he's going to happily let play get away from that situation. And he himself is going to end up trying to kind of reposition to put himself in a better spot. Rail again, connecting onto him, though. Very low. One rail is going to finish him off. And his second champion. Looks like he escapes for now, though. Yeah, Plague, I uh, would have probably... Me, personally, I would have I would have went for the kill there. Um, and left the armor and came back for it after. He was really low. Oh, rice and close, too, here. LWF hits his opponent, but also hits himself in the process. And Plague, flying away, is able to finalize that next kill. So Plague has the advantage here. One more frag to go, and he's got round two in the bag. And they'll tie this map up at one to one. Nice rail hey. shots. It's going to put his opponent very low. In fact, there you go. There's the finishing blow. Plague is going to close it out, and we tie it up. Yeah, too too much aggression on the LWF's uh, part. He had, you know, he played him good in the first round. He was doing smart about, you know, if he round took too much two, damage, he'd back away and kind of rebuild his stack, as you noticed. But two, uh, the second round, one, I don't know, he kind of lost his three, uh, lost his focus a little bit. Yeah. Well, round number three begins here, and Plague, along with LWF, are both going to find themselves in the fight relatively quickly for yet another round here. To no avail, though. Neither one's really going to lock down there until right now, and they're right up in each other's faces. Plague has to go for the panic pop oh, of the ghost block. He didn't see him. He literally popped the shield, and when he flipped around, there was a little image. He saw it, but he missed it. LWF. So, LWF losing his opponent here. Both abilities being used. However, they're going to be coming up again probably by the next time these two meet each other. But just like the last rounds here, LWF really focused on making sure he gets that control of the mega health, and he's got it for yet another occurrence here. As uh, he's going to try to hunt down his opponent with that extra health. Doesn't have the armor, though, so he's got to be really careful here. You really need to take two of those rail shots before he's dead. 
Yeah, with his uh, with his um, clutch play, he should really be getting those green or those smaller uh, light armors. Given the hundred, you know, if the other, if you're gonna give the heavy armor to your opponent, you need to be making sure you're grabbing those green, the, the uh, light armors. Plague still trying to figure out where LWF is too, as he prioritizes that full armor pickup. He's got it, and we could go into another fight right now over on the LG. Plague doing so much damage, does end up having to pop the Ghost Walk, but I think it's an offensive use, and it gets right behind his opponent and finishes off that first that was, kill. I saw that frag coming literally three seconds before it happened. He he. He, he chose to engage one. He didn't have a shield up, so he went into a shield, a non-shield battle. Got took damage. Nyx went uh, ghost walk, and that was just an easy, easy finish. Oh, no, the BF taking a fight he should definitely not be taking right now. Trying to get that armor pick up over the story. Oh, oh wow. LWF, the hail mary charge, but it works out and gets that trade. He's still low though, so he's gonna gotta stay on the run here until he can recover his health, which yeah. he's not gonna get the chance to. Too much, again, too much, too much aggression, too much strafe jumping around. It was, it was a Hail Mary charge. That was actually Plague's fault. He could have just backed off and just thrown a bunch of damage at the uh, Mega Health and been fine. But uh, yeah, so he got a little lucky there, but then he, he charged right into some damage. Oh, now Plague's got the read to catches him moving his way through the portal there. Misses that second oh, rail. Luck. Still, oh, wants that Mega Health. Unfortunately, wants that a little bit too much. You got to be really careful, you know, people are maybe from previous quakes. See, uh, you got to be really careful about running into items simply to pick it up, thinking, oh, I'm just going to pick it up even though I'm going to eat this rocket. Uh, that may have worked in Quake Live or and maybe even Quake 3 to a lesser degree. It's not going to work in this version of Quake. Uh, and, and Ambush just does too much damage. So we've got the spawn coming up now. Oh, Plague. However, it gets, or LWF, excuse me, gets backed into a corner there. So his opponent is going to take round three here, and he puts himself up to map point now with a two to one lead. Yeah, that was a good little peek around rocket. Like, and that's kind of illustrated the point. He hit that first good rocket, and once you get that lead and stack, I mean, everybody stacks. It, you can just take people down so quick. Oh, spawn position works out great for Plague, too. He goes right into that fight. He gets some pretty decent damage. Thankfully, LWF is still playing on the clutch, so he's got quite a bit more health to play off of, but LWF just going directly into the path of the rockets there he's already lost his first champion yeah a little too like again he wants just... a second kill too. oh the telefrag wow <laughs> that, was actually... that was really well played actually that was really slick he popped the timing on the stealth like perfectly so that so that he just wouldn't see him and so that he could track him without even realizing that he was being followed that was really well played yeah plague has got him on the ropes now she definitely uh close this map out LWF, well, one more opportunity to do it, and it is going to be over here. However, he's already taking a little bit of damage from that rocket fire. Not anything significant, since he did get that full armor pickup, so he's eating most of that up with the armor. But into this fight, got bounced into the air, needs to dodge the next one. 63 HP, and the Ghost Walk is used to retreat this time. Plague, not going to go for that finalizing kill just yet. Yeah, I was a little surprised. They're going to jump he's gonna regret it. Yeah, into this next fight as LWF is able to move in. Got that little bit of extra health to play off of there. Well, Plague kind of let him, allowed him the opportunity to back off and run for the two health bu uh, bubbles that were in the back uh, hallway there. Instead, I felt he could have used his Ghost Walk to push the position. You know he's going to run for the health bubbles when you come out and you ambush him right away. Well, now he's going to be waiting here. However, LWF ready to take that fight, trying to finish off Plague's second champion. This would be a three to one comeback. If he could pull it off, but he peeks in with that low HP, and that is going to close out the first map here, and Plague is going to be the one to take it. A couple clutch rails there at the end by Plague. He was really hurting with that 14 health. So, I mean, that's just some good shooting at the end. Uh, both both players need some got some cleaning up to do lwf looking at the stats not a single rail hit uh, and he only shot six six times which means he wasn't creating creating angles creating opportunities to to land those shots and also very little lg no lg usage um, so he needs to mix up his arsenal a little bit i mean his rockets were he has some good rockets here and there um, that were good, but if he's not putting out any lightning gun damage, any rail gun damage at all on ZTN, I, you're gonna lose. Well, as we did, uh, as we did say before, folks, these are best of three matches, so that's only the first map. Plague now takes the advantage, though, and we should be going into our second one here in just a moment. As we uh, as we head back over to the lobby, we'll just wait for those players to ready up. 
and then we can jump right back into it, of course, and see how our second match is going to unfold. Overall, though, first match, it, it's actually, it actually seems like it worked out pretty evenly. Both players definitely had their ups and downs. It's just that LWF kind of lost quite a bit of momentum as we got towards that, like, second and third round there. Yeah, yeah, um, pretty evenly matched, definitely. Um, like I said, if I, if I were to sit there and, and watch that match, you know, two, three more times, um, sit down. but there were definitely areas um, both players had opportunities to take advantage of the other opponent's mistakes um so and then and then it, sometimes it seemed like they'd be in a groove they play really well and then sometimes i don't know if they lost focus or what have you um especially on lws part i thought i thought maybe he got he just got too aggressive with, with some of his play so i i, I don't know what, what exactly what was going through his head in some of those exchanges um uh, but you don't necessarily i guess i guess what i would say from seeing that is you don't necessarily need to challenge every single major item you don't need to put yourself in harm's way for every single item you can use that as bait and to kind of read where your opponent is going um and so you, you just got to be careful about choosing that engagement over a major item because pretty much when you engage over something like a mega health or a heavy armor you, you they're usually in positions where once you engage there's very little room or avenues for escape so it's usually a fight till you're going to die or you're going to take some major damage doing it. So you need to be ready for those engagements. Yeah, absolutely. So, guys, like I said before, we are working on just setting up this next match really quickly here. So you're going to have to give us a moment. Uh, is I believe one of our players may have made the mistake of thinking that that match was only a best of one. So we still have to do the uh, second map, of course, but just working on getting him back into the lobby so that we can rejoin it. Just give us one moment here. Just trying to sort everything out, of course. There we go, cool. As we said before, though, folks, there's going to be a lot more action to come here today. This is only the opening stages of this first qualifier, and this is only the opening day of the tournament itself. Uh, we still are going to play up to we're going to play up to the top 16, I believe, today, and then on Sunday we're going to have our final matches to determine who is actually going to earn those slots moving forward into QuakeCon. Those are the big matches. Those are the ones you're going to watch, and we also have plenty more qualifiers going on. Uh, uh, going on throughout the weekend as well for the European stream, so you guys can go ahead over, follow at ESL Quake on Twitter, and you can find plenty more information on how exactly and when exactly those streams are going to go down. As there's a lot of lead-up coming up to QuakeCon itself and that million-dollar prize pool for the Quake World Championship, so you guys are definitely going to be wanting to uh, keep up with, with what exactly is going on and who is making it through to that to the land and the regionals, of course. Yep, I'm, I'm excited. Like I said, <laughs> I'm a little... A little too excited, Alex. I wish I could play a little bit, but there, there's a part of me who really wants to compete. Like I said, the, the seeing the bracket, you know, live, and it's been so long since I've been involved in a, a Quake event. So it's just kind of it's got it gets all those old emotions going. going Absolutely. Me. Well, you gotta we gotta be here, man. We gotta bring it to the people. No, that's all right. The ones to it's present right. it. But yeah, I mean, absolutely. So we're gonna have, like I said before, hopefully plenty of old names showing up. We already we already mentioned earlier. Uh, one moment. We already had mentioned earlier how uh, we have we have two relatively well-known names, and unfortunately, we're not able to participate participate in today's tournament exactly. Uh, but that, that's a uh, Rafa and Dehang, but they are going to be they are going to be joining us for some of the upcoming tournaments over those next few weeks, of course. And I'm I'm hoping that we'll see many more uh, names come out of the woodwork as we get closer and closer to the uh, the regionals and, of course, the big land event itself. Yeah, I'd be I'd be very surprised if Rafa doesn't find himself at the qualifying spot <laughs> that's just my my prediction you know just the just the just the previous or the current i should technically say uh, world champion of quake so i think that would be uh that'd be a little bit crazy that didn't happen actually it would be interesting certainly all right well it does look like we have the uh players setting up hold on one second here we're just sorting out the lobby and everything like that there we go all right, cool. So we have the players back on the server, guys, uh, and we're now just uh, getting our server, and then we can jump back into it here and get into our second map, which is going to be moving over to Corrupted Keep. This is one of the newer maps added with the E3 patch, of course. So for those of you who may have tried some of the earlier versions of the beta and haven't been able to jump in over those past few weeks, this will be something new to you. As this is uh, this is a map, there's a lot. Of, it's a very close knit map, so there's going to be a lot of fights happening very quickly here, even in a one v one format. We've got the next draft going though, so let's hop in game and take a look at it. Yeah, as you mentioned, smaller map, uh, no railgun on this map for people who are unfamiliar with it. So it's purely, it's all rockets, rail, machine gun, um, and tri-bolt 
and some shotgun, of course, and you know, nail gun, all the all the other weapons, but no railgun. So, um, especially with the close proximity of, of mega health and the, and the uh, heavy armor, uh, scale bear is definitely a popular pick. I'm surprised Plague went so light on this. Actually, I'm curious to see because yeah, my go ahead. Yeah, in, in my experience on this map, it, it seems to favor more of the tankier classes because you are engaging in close quarter combat a lot. It's rocket and, and lightning gun, pretty much. A lot, of, a lot of sort of surprise encounters, essentially. So those tanky picks tend to be uh, tend to be a little interesting as a result of that. I want to see how these. Uh, I want to see how he handles, especially scale bear. You know, there'll be a scale bear to me is is a really powerful pick on this map. Um, so I'm curious how he's got two characters. I mean, uh, the BJ Blazkowicz and the Nyx, who can. I mean, if they get hit with the charge, they're going to be they're going to be hurting. Galena Galena's become a little bit more of a popular pick over the past couple weeks too. We've been starting to see her utilize a little bit more since she uh, she got a buff pretty recently. I think that was the same patch that we saw this map added at the, right around E3 actually. So. Yeah, you have to pay a little more attention to the totems. You can't just one shot them with like a quick machine gun bullet. They have 50 health. So you have to, you know, shoot a rocket or spend spend some, you know, LG ammo, MG ammo to, to take them down. So it takes a little longer. Round one, fight. All right, well, it looks like, let's see here. Did we get LWF back? No, it seems he's disconnected from the match. So we're going to work on getting him back in, folks. Uh, and then we should be able to, we should be able to actually jump into the match itself here. So we're just going to have to remake that lobby really quickly. And then we can, uh, we can start off with this second map. But it is currently, for those of you who are just joining us, this is the first initial stages of the North American Quake qualifiers here for the Quake Regionals leading up to the Quake World Championships with that million dollar prize pool. Play currently has the lead here in our best of three series. He's already taken the first map. Uh, so with him being disconnected, we're just going to have to remake the lobby real quick, as I said before, and then we can get started with the second one here. Just to kill some time, um, you notice kind of when he spawned Plague Spawn, you have a choice. And this map's kind of interesting because you can spawn in real close proximity to your opponent. And you have a choice to make an initial push for uh, Mega Health, or you can choose to run away, actually, and go for the um, heavy armor. Um, it really depends on the champion you pick right away whether or not you can just rush the mega health and you know maybe you have the sore lag you can spit or etc it's it, it's kind of interesting that that initial spawn seeing where people go yeah and we've uh we've been seeing uh we've been seeing some really interesting stuff specifically to go back to the the galena for a moment there and how she's able to really sort of trap people uh, that's that's been a really interesting aspect that we saw actually I think one of the I forget exactly who it was, but we saw it happen at E3 actually. Uh, it was one of our pros that did it. It was I think it was one of the pros versus Spaz. Joe's match. Yeah, it was Spaz. That's who it was. Okay, thank you for yeah. refreshing my memory. Uh, he he like specifically set up like four or five dotums, and and I, and I doubt you'd see this exact instance happening. You might be able to do it, but at the very least, it would block something off. Uh, but he stacked like four, like three or four totems in like one spot of the map, and then just baited his opponent into going through the teleporter that led right out to where those totems are, and basically just killed him in one hit. Yeah, I won't say, uh, I won't name names, but I was playing against somebody and um, I had him two totems set up at the portal entrance on ZTN, you know, on, on the exit. And I was gotten in a fight around Mega Health and I forced the person in, in, in through the portal and they took 150 damage straight off the <laughs> and just insta died from the two totems. It was great. <laughs> It's a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of fun to play with that, of course. I think <laughs> I think we've been seeing that uh, that picked and picked and utilized a little bit more uh, here and there as she's become uh, more popular of a champion. And I mean, we've we've even seen that, like we said before, it's still a very new game, and the meta itself is is very chaotic in that respect. This is oftentimes some of the most exciting parts of a lot of these competitive games, where you do have uh, where you do have everybody still trying to figure out how everything works, and because of that, while well, everything becomes viable in a way, and, and before the meta sort of gets locked down, everybody's experimenting. It's really interesting to watch uh, how these players sort of. Uh, figure out how exactly they want to they want to cater to their own play style yeah i, I like uh, the beginning of games I, I in my opinion that like when they're in when they're out on the scene a little too long you know it, things get a little dull i guess because there's not a whole lot of new discovery like you said with the new game things are being discovered now and you know you'll, you'll see new trick jumps you'll see uh, new uses for abilities you didn't think of or or just just new new you know just stuff that you didn't think of and that's what i think is exciting especially about a new quake all right, guys. Well, we are still working on getting him back into the match. So while we are doing that, uh, we're going to go to a short break here to figure things out. And then as soon as we have our player reconnected and the game starting up, we'll be bringing it back to you. Stick with us and we'll be back hopefully here in just a couple of moments. Just give me one moment here. And once again, guys, this is the Quake Champions 
North American qualifiers, the first run of it here uh, for Duel, of course, and we're going to be having we're going to be having these sacrifice ones coming up very shortly as well. In fact, actually, I think we can uh, I think we can cancel this break because we are getting ready to start off now. We got LWF back in, so uh, we should be we should be good to go in a second. Hopefully we'll see the uh, same picks and everything there. We'll just have to possibly redo the draft, and we'll see if anything changes up from uh, from what we had going before. I think uh, I, th I think we'll probably stick with what they had though. That's what I'm guessing. I, I like uh, Clutch on this map, so uh, if LWF like Clutch on ZTN, uh, I would figure he'd like him even more on this one. Curious if he'll change up his rotation a little bit. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't seem like he got much going with Clutch though. Unfortunately, it kind of seemed like. It kind of seemed like that clutch was almost always the first champion to go in all of those matches. So I'm, I'm personally kind of hoping he sways away from it, but maybe maybe we'll see him test it again. Yeah, you just got to be careful about your engagements because you really are the size of a house. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. When, yeah, when people want a lightning gun, you or a machine gun, you, you, they're going to hit everything. <laughs> all right, well, you can see the draft going off again. And it's looking like pretty similar picks. We have the Blaskovitz coming in for Plague. Uh, the skill bear over there, so we do have that, that kind of tankier champion coming out for LWF, and then he's stuck with the Galena and Visor besides that. And now last pick for Plague. There it is. There's the Nyx coming into play. Nyx has been um, Nyx has been a very popular choice actually for this map specifically. Uh, I was I was checking out some of the other the other tournaments and whatnot that have been going on. We've been seeing a lot of that play just because of how how quickly she can navigate around this map, despite the very uh, very squishy nature to how she plays. Yeah, she's her movement's amazing, and of course, being able to choose your engagements with the ghost walk, uh, I mean, it's just a huge advantage to me. If you if you use it right, you get that first shot off. But again, you, you just got to be really careful on this one because it's all close quarters combat, uh, two good rockets as a Nyx, and your dead are seriously hurting. So a fight can turn on a dime on you. I've, I've just had it happen to myself. It's like you think you got somebody where you want them, you come out of ghost walk, and it's the next thing you know, you get hit with one good rocket flung in the air, and you're like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so everything back into the game now. And once again, we do apologize for that little bit of delay there. I think LWF had a slight internet issue that caused him to dip out, so we'll hope that doesn't happen again and that we can jump forward here and continue up this matchup and see if Plague is going to take it two to nothing. As you can see, he's already got the 1-0 advantage going for himself, so if he wins this map, he's going to push forward in the tournament. For LWF, though, he needs to strike back now, as he'll be eliminated if he doesn't do it here. He's going to start off nice and slow, crouching around the map, trying to see if he can bait his opponent and going for this rocket pickup. Well, it works, unfortunately. It's just not at the range that he would have liked there initially, so he does end up kind of bailing out from that fight and peeling away. Yeah, it, not looking to. You want to control the rocket launcher on this map. See, that's what Plague is doing. He's waiting for him to come back, which is a smart play. He, he honestly sh wasted too much time sitting there with shotgun. He need you need to secure that rocket launcher as quickly as possible. As soon as he did a little crouching and realizing that Plague wasn't there, he just went in and taken it. Yeah. So Plague's going to net himself that first kill, and oh, he's wasting no time chasing down the second champion here, too, for LWF. Oh, they're taking a different route, though, and Plague hasn't read into it yet, so he's got a nasty surprise coming up from behind, and that is going to be LWF getting the quick trade and bringing it down to a 2v2. Keep your head on a swivel, that's all I got to say. He just got lazy with, with uh, keeping track of that other side and came right around on him. Yeah, it didn't seem like he really even paid mind to it. It was just fully tunnel vision on the rocket spawn, so. Yep. A little bit odd from him there. But nonetheless, it works out to LWF's advantage as he gets back into the fight. And we are going to see him. He did have a good lock on the play. I don't think he really realized it, though. So we found out too late. Oh, great read on the rocket, though. But we also are going to see the duel pop coming out from the Blaskowitz. It's not really doing enough damage to get that kill. And ultimately, he falls back through the teleporter up towards the spawn on top. He's going to get a little bit more ammo for it. But that also gives time for LWF to recover. And now hightail himself out of there as well. Gonna be using the active ability here now on the visor. They're both low right now. I mean, he just got the yeah. He didn't grab the mega. I'm surprised. That was from the mistake of LWF Spartan. Both are low, but both seem relatively willing to fight. Like this, this is carrying over from the last map we saw that too. They didn't really seem to care too much about their health pools. They just were okay with getting into a fight. No LWF. That's a finish right here. You he's, gotta finish this. He's got a leg. Trying to see if he can turn it around. Good damage on the rocket. Needs one more potentially though to take out his opponent. Think in the armor, and now these two health bubbles is going to bring his health back from the grave a little bit. He's still dancing on thin ice, though. With this armor, yeah, he should be back to an okay spot. It's a poor choice, choice of ability use there for uh, for Plague. 
and Plague in the meantime is just trying to go for a couple of those cooldown pickups. Setting it a little bit closer since we've seen, we have seen already how powerful the, uh, the Blaskovitz's duel can be, especially if you kind of surprise your opponent with it. Yeah, the, the double uh, lightning gun or a double machine gun is is, is devastating. It's just so you gotta you gotta you gotta use it in the right the right position. Nicely done by Plague there, forcing his opponent outside of the full armor spawn. So he was able to deny him of that pickup and now finish off the second kill himself. So he's got the advantage going into LWF's last life for this round. He's down to the skill bear. That's all he has to play off of. And Plague wants it. He's popped the dual wield already right up in the skill bearer's face. And he'll get that kill, finishing off LWF's last champion and giving him the first round. Yeah, he had the, uh, at the end there. Plague had the heavy armor and mega health. The timer was separated. He just picked it up. He was, he was in great shape. LWF should have just been three, looking to avoid him at two, that point. One, Be the mouse, hide from the cat. Yeah. Well, Plague's got himself a nice little advantage to work off of. One round so far going into his favor. Does get pegged a little bit, and now he's starting off on the Nyx again, so he does have to be very careful with this amount of health. You can immediately see that. Goes in, pops the rock out, tries to bait him into a fight. However, LWF ran into that perfectly, but both kill each other with that last rocket. So it's going to be just a straight-up one-for-one -one trade to start off here in the second round. That's what I was talking about regarding that stack. Plague actually got the better of that of that encounter, but because he had the, the weaker champion in terms of stack, he had to trade a kill. So they're going to get back into the fight pretty quickly. LWF popping his ultimate there to try and keep better lock as to where exactly his opponent's moving there. When he uses that, it does give him essentially a wall hack for its duration. So he can track down exactly where his opponent is going. And he's able to utilize that a lot better to position himself and just line up for a nice sequence of damage to get a frag. Speaking of which, he might be doing that right now. Both of them crouching around each other, and they both spot each other at the same time. But some great flicked aim from Plague. Had to shoot above him there to get that kill. He still lined up that second rocket, however, and that is going to give him the advantage yet again here, putting LWF back down to his last champion on the skill bear. Good idea with the ambush, but uh, poor idea with doing it without his health and armor maxed out. He was missing armor. Like I said, like said earlier, uh, you got you got to at least get those the light armors if you're not in control. Same as before, Plague really trying to focus on picking up this armor. The charge does go in. It does connect onto Plague, but it doesn't matter as his opponent did not have the armor pick up there. And so as a result, still gets destroyed by those rockets. And we see round two going to Plague as well. So he's up 2-0 now. And with just one more round, he'll have himself this set in the bag. Three, yeah, he's, he's in control. One. LWF seems to be uh, breaking down a little bit mentally. So we'll see if he can maybe turn it around this round. Yeah, this is kind of what happened on the last map, unfortunately, too, with LWF, where it seemed like he kind of had the fight about him at the start of the map, but then as things kind of fell into his control, he very quickly uh, very quickly became more and more of an easier target. And with things like that happening, it's certainly not going to help his case. You saw that little spike of 75 damage at the distance. That was actually the totem connecting. Didn't realize it had gone down, so he ate a bunch of damage from that, and now he's on the run with a little over 25 health currently and just one tick of armor. Stopwatch. LWF manages to make it out of there okay, though. And now both are going to end up fighting each other. Back over here by the Rockets. Always kind of losing his opponent a little bit. Should be able to move in, though, and find him here. And actually, no, doesn't realize he's sitting in the halls. He's going to try to lock him down with Rockets, but that midair one misses. So Plague, yet again, is going to get the opening kill. Yeah, that was just uh, poor map awareness. LWF just came around the corner and didn't, had no clue mm -hmm. that Plague was there. And this and is... This this is what not to do when you're respawning. He's, he's pushing a heavy item. I mean, this is yeah, this, this, this is what I mean about mentally breaking down. You can see the kind of realizing he's probably not going to win, and he starts making some poor choices, trying to trying to force the issue when that's not going to win you the game. And now we can see that potentially right here. Totem's on the ground, so he's got full control over the rocket spawn. It did get blown up. The charge, however, is going to let him get outside of this fight. Hopefully to a better position. Just can't find it, though. Stuck in the corner. Just getting absolutely devastated by these rockets currently. And trying to keep I, li I literally saw that charge. I knew he was going to do it. Like say, it just the Plague's kind of reading off of it now. Um, he's going to run into some damage here. I expect it to be over. LWF down. He ran into that totem, I think, on the way into the building, too. So he's on a 50 HP. He's got the bubbles to pick up, but still... Needs a little bit of armor. Thankfully, that one's on the ground, so saves him for right now. Let's him get outside. Oh, but he just gets completely destroyed. Locked in by the LG, and that is indeed going to give it to Plague, as he will take this match two to nothing.
that's a good weapon choice. He you know, came around careless again, um, too aggressive, strafe jumped in a straight line at somebody with an LG out, and that's a wrap. That's a wrap. All right. So as you can see there, we have some of the stats showing up. Anything uh, significant you want to point the out light, there? The lightning.